deep in the heart of Texas. Memorial Stadium in Austin expects a record crowd of 83,000 this afternoon. It's the third oldest rivalry in college football. The 97th meeting between the Aggies of Texas A&M and the Texas Longhorns. And hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler, and welcome to Austin. It is an old rivalry back to the late 1800s when this one started, but in recent years, dominated by the Aggies of Texas A&M. As you take a look, it's been six years of losses by the Longhorns to the Aggies, dating back to 1983. And as you might expect in a series and a rivalry this old, a lot of tradition this week. The elephant walk for the seniors at College Station for Texas A&M. As they take a final trip around campus to reminisce, it's culminated with the bonfire and the burn desire to beat the Texas Longhorns. The season in Austin has proven to be 100% cotton. And now the eyes of Texas and the nation are on the Longhorns. Dan Jacobs, both these teams know where they're going bowling, but still a lot at stake in this ballgame. Well, there's a lot at stake, especially for Texas. Now, they've got some national championship hopes, but if they ever want to get to the national championship, they know they've got to beat Texas A&M. Keep in mind, though, the last time they did that, as we mentioned before, was 1983, and that's when they went on to the Cotton Bowl. But for Texas A&M, the stakes are also as large. They come into this game with a record of 8-2-1, and one. and wouldn't it be a nice cap to their season, they're thinking, if they could beat Texas? But perhaps uh, head coach R.C. Slocum at A&M said it best. He said, this game was the most talked about topic in the state of Texas. And he also said throughout the rankings and the Bulls, I love to coach in this game. Well, last year got off to a heated start. Mike Joy's on the sideline where we hope it's a little safer than it was last season. Mike? Well, I didn't bring my flak jacket this week, Brad, but as one player was quoted in his local paper, this is what college football is all about. Two teams that really hate each other. And in the pregame, supposedly gentlemanly coin toss last year, they got a little shoving, a little bumping, and nearly a full-fledged melee. Up at College, Texas, a uh, college station rather, they call the Longhorns tea sippers. Down here, they call the Aggies farmers. If you're not a football fan, and maybe you follow Texas politics, it's like Clayton Williams and Ann Richards. That's the relationship between the Aggies and the Longhorns. This stadium is raucous. 83,000. Set to watch the Longhorns and the Aggies. And before the kickoff, let's go to Andrea Joyce of the Downtown Athletic Club in New York. Brad, usually we're uptown, but today we are in Lower Manhattan at a special place for a very special event. I'm here in the Heisman Room where I'll be joined later by James Brown and Mike Francesa. Five candidates have been invited to take part in the Heisman announcement this year. Now, most experts acknowledge that it is a two-man race between Notre Dame's Ragib Ismail and BYU's Ty Detmer. But last night, friendships began. There's Rocket with his back to us. Virginia's Sean Moore in the middle with a cast on his injured right hand. And Eric breakdancing the enemy, exchanging some dance notes. As traditional as is the Heisman, today there are also some great traditional matchups, and we'll return for the kickoff of Texas A&M Texas after this message. CBS Sports presents college football. Live from Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas, it's the Texas A&M Aggies versus the Texas Longhorns. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. AT&T, the right choice. And by Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down. The Silver Bullet is the right beer now. I don't think you could get in this place with a shoehorn, or in this case, a boot horn. 83,000 expected at Memorial Stadium here in Austin. And what a gorgeous day we've got. They've even gone so far as to put some new seats down in the uh, end zone to our right. And those will seat an additional, probably an additional four or five hundred people. There you see the conditions. What a gorgeous way to start December. The Longhorns come in nine and one. Texas A&M, as Dan mentioned, eight, two and one, but not really getting a lot of respect. won the toss deferred to the second half so the Aggies will have the ball first and they'll work from their 20 after that kickoff shagged by Shane Garrett in the end zone Bucky Richardson the quarterback 
for the Aggies. He took over in game seven, and he's the leader. There he is, Bucky Richardson, joined in the backfield for Texas a and by Darren Lewis and Robert Wilson. Lewis, the all-time Southwest Conference career rushing leader. Gary Oliver and Shane Garrett, the wideouts, and the tight end, Dennis Ransom. The Aggies work from their own 20, first down. Darren Lewis. Got about four. It'll bring up second down and six. And he runs behind a good offensive line, does Lewis. And led by an All-American at center. The guards, Pappas and Ellisor. And the tackles for Texas A&M. Rockhold and McCall. Second down, a long five for Texas A&M. Again, Lewis, the tailback in the eye. On the option, Richardson, first down. He runs it so well. Brian Jones knocked him out of bounds. Defensively, for the Longhorns of Texas, Shane Dronett and Oscar Giles, two great defensive ends. James Patton and Tommy Jeter inside at the tackles. Brian Jones, the middle linebacker, who just made that last stop. Anthony Curl and Boone Powell outside backers for Texas. Mark Berry and Brady Cadmus on the corners. And Lance Gunn and Stanley Richard in the safety. First down, Texas a and On the option, Lewis. And he scoops out to the 43-yard line. Dronette made the tackle. And one thing that Texas is trying to do at the perimeter is trying to force uh, Bucky Richardson to make a very quick decision on the pitch, the pitch of the football. And so far, Bucky's been doing a pretty good job of that, of just choosing the right time to let the ball go or tuck it up and take it up the field. Lewis got it to the 43. And the second first down of the day is two yards away for the Aggies, second down and two. Wilson, the fullback. Has the first down and runs over would-be Longhorn tacklers. Boone Powell finally brought the big fella down. We talked to Robert Wilson the other day at uh, in College Station at their practice, and we looked at him and we said, this guy is a muscly fullback. Watch him just run over a couple of defenders. That's Barry number nine. Now, Barry's going to get tracked on right here. That's like a Mack truck running over top of you. Luckily, he got some help from uh, Boone Powell. Wilson almost lost the handle on the football, but got it back in and picked up the first down, the 49-yard line. Again, straight ahead with Wilson into Texas territory. Now near the 46. Anthony Curl made the tackle for Texas. Brad, you mentioned before that Mike Arthur, the center number 52, is an All-American. I want to show you why. Watch his block right here on the nose tackle. And this is what you, you ask your center to do. One-on-one -on -one blocking is very difficult for a center, but you see he just took his man right out of the picture frame. One-on-one -on -one blocking is difficult for the center because he's got to snap the ball first. Before. We got a good look at our Arthur there. Second and four. Richardson got around the first burnt orange wave and got out of bounds close to a first down. Texas A&M moving it right down the field here on their opening drive. There are their numbers uh, so far this year. Uh, they're ranked fourth in the NCAA in rushing offense. One of the things that's so effective for them is they move the ball so well running it, then when Bucky Richardson sets up the pass, of course, he's going to roll out and sprint out the pass. He's very effective getting out of the pocket and throwing at the perimeter. But R.C. Slocum, as he told us, that 14th in scoring, they get all those yards, but sometimes they don't rack up quite enough points when they should. Short yardage and a first down as Richardson takes it himself. So the Aggies started this drive at their own 20. They have worked it to the Texas 39. As you can see, Bucky Richardson's a guy that can get it done on the ground. And he doesn't throw it that badly either, although he's not known as having the greatest arm. Last week in their win, he was a pretty effective throw in the football, too. They're coming off a 56-10 win over TCU last week. No score here, first quarter, but the Aggies have it first down at the Horn, 39. 
Lewis. A hard earned three yards. Stanley Richard came up from the secondary to make the hit. Shane Jornette had a was in good position for uh, for Texas to make the stop in the backfield. He's number 81. He just broke through the line of scrimmage. He's working against Matt McCall. And seemed to have Wilson stop back there, just missed the tackle. At the 36-yard line. Second down and seven. The ninth play of the drive upcoming. And they've all been rushing plays. Lewis cuts back inside the 30, and he might have another first down for the Aggies. When we talked to Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator at Texas A&M, we talked about Darren Lewis. So what's the difference this year as opposed to last year in his running ability? So, well, the thing is he stayed in College Station this summer and got himself in excellent shape, and that's really made all the difference in the world for him. He'll be a number one draft choice in the National Football League. A bit of an off year as a junior, but boys, he put it together now this senior season. First down. Wilson, he just puts that head down and uses it at a battering ram inside the 25. Boone Powell was holding on for dear life, got help from some friends. You look at Robert Wilson, there's some question as to whether or not he's going to be at Texas A&M next year. He's got the possibility of entering the NFL draft. And uh, when you look at him physically, you know he's ready. But uh, you always wonder about uh, young people coming out a little bit too early, maybe taking advantage of that last opportunity to stay in college and just get another year under your belt. Physically, there's no question he's ready to go. Some scouts feel he's the best fullback in the country. In motion. The pitch to Lewis. On the left side. First down. Number 25. To the 18 yard line. Actually, almost the 17 for Lewis on that run. Darren Lewis was telling us uh, how much he missed uh, Bucky Richardson uh, as his running partner in the backfield because Bucky uh, makes the defense pay attention to him. That frees up things on the outside for, for Darren Lewis. R.C. Slocum. 16-6-1 as the head man of the Aggies. An 8-2-1 this year. Lewis. Short game that time. James Patton. Closed the door, and Boone Powell again helped out on the tackle. This is where that Texas defense is going to start bristling up a little bit. They get very difficult to score on down in this area. At the 17-yard line. Second down. And 10 to go for the Aggies. They have not thrown a pass yet. Lewis on the pitch. He might score. Touchdown. But credit Robert Wilson with a good block out front. 9.45 to go first quarter. The Aggies on the board first. Back in Austin where Texas A&M leads the Longhorns 7-0 after an 80-yard drive was capped off by Darren Lewis touchdown run. And Terry Venatulius will kick it away. Chris Samuels and Adrian Walker deep for the Longhorns. 
Taken by the up man. And some room to go on the outside. Malone takes it out to the 44-yard line. look at that uh, touchdown from the end zone. Now watch this combination block here by the center Mike Arthur and John Ellis, Ellis or the guard. That's also what helped spring Darren Lewis into the backfield because watch Arthur pick up the backside linebacker. That's Ryan Jones, 60. Ordinarily, he'd be coming in here and making a stop right about there. But no, Darren Lewis gets all the way to the zone. Well, a nice way to answer that is with a 32-yard kickoff return by Van Malone. And so the Longhorns have excellent field position from their own 44. Draw play, not much. Phil Brown got about a yard. Texas offensively. Peter Gardere at the controls at quarterback. Phil Brown who just had the last carry and Chris Samuels in the backfield. Johnny Walker and Keith Cash, the wide receivers, and the tight end is twin brother Kerry Cash. Second and ten. Cash in motion. Samuels on the pitch. To midfield. Or it'll bring up third down and four. Offensively across the front wall for Texas, Todd Smith at the center spot. The guards, Wayne Miller and Jeff Boyd. And it tackles Chuck Johnson and Stan Thomas. We have not seen a pass in this game yet with eight and a half minutes to go first quarter. Will we see one here from Texas? Third down at four. Samuel in motion. Option, Gardere. I don't think so, but he leaned forward as far as he could and lost his hat in the process. The two teams mix it up a bit. Quentin Coriat in on the tackle. You see Peter Gardere putting the helmet back on. See how they spot this one. Close enough to look. David McWilliams with a new contract in his fourth season as head man of the Longhorns. And what a season they've had. Nine and one coming in. A lot of people wondered whether he was going to make the grade this year. Now he's got a new deal. And uh, the athletic director down here at Texas, DeLos Dodge, told me about uh, the endowment that they've also got for the head coaching position as well as the uh, coordinator position offensively and defensively. It adds up to over a million and a half dollars. They're short by a yard. Peter Gardere loses his helmet just at the end of this play. Now, what happened on the play, though, is you see William Thomas, number 11, up the field. That's one of the things that Texas wants to do. But this is what they don't want to have happen, have their quarterback get mugged downfield. <laughs> well, a yard short, Texas will punt it away. Shane Garrett, his numbers on the season. He'll kick it. Alex Waits, I should say, to kick, and Shane Garrett back deep. Texas tries to cover it and can't quite get there. So the Yankees will go back to work on offense when we come back. They're up by a touchdown. Back in Austin, Texas, Brad Nessler, Dan Jiggins, and Mike Joy with 7.42 to go first quarter. AM in front by a touchdown after an 80-yard drive the first time they had it. They work again from their own 20-yard line. Wilson, nice move, and got five yards. Not only big, he's quick. I think that may be the deceiving thing about Robert Wilson because he's so compact and muscled up. The, the natural tendency is to think that maybe he's not all of that quick and nifty, but he's got some nice moves when he approaches the line of scrimmage. Change with that number 81, uh, that time approached him on the line of scrimmage just simply you flat out missed him. Stanley Richard and Anthony Curl finally did bring him down. But he got five, second and five. Richardson will lose yardage this time. 
Lance Gunn. Darren Lewis came into this game 138 yards away from 5,000. He's certainly gotten off to a good start in this one. As you can see, if he has a big game, he'll move into some real serious company. The top four there all won Heisman trophies. Anthony Thompson finished second. George Rogers was a Heisman Trophy winner, too. A lot of people feel this kid doesn't get his due. First pass of the day coming up, maybe. It's complete, but it may be short of the first down. Shane Garrett on the reception. Looks like it's about a football shy as you see the marker right there with the ball. And Texas A&M will give it up. John Wilson comes in to punt, so the Longhorns defense shuts down the Aggies that time. That's Chris Samuels back for the horn. Texas with 10 men up. Looks like they're going to try to bring some heat. Line drive. Samuels makes the catch and goes down after about a one-yard return. Penalty marker just flew in late. Back near midfield. I don't know what that's about. Might have a personal foul tacked onto this. That'll improve the Longhorns' field position. And R.C. Slocum didn't see that flag until just now. Yeah, and the one thing he does not need in this ball game are these Personal kinds of penalties. Personal foul on the kicking team. First down. And now the Longhorns will almost have it at midfield here. 6-14 to go first quarter. Texas A&M in front. Texas A&M with a 7-0 lead here in the first quarter. As we take a look at their defense, John Miller at the nose. On the outside, Jason Black and Albert Jones. The linebackers, Jason Atkinson and Quentin Coriat are inside, and Marcus Buckley and William Thomas outside. Secondary, Kevin Smith with seven interceptions. Derek Frazier on the other side in the safeties. Larry Horton and Chris Kroon. Texas, great field position from its own 49. That followed the personal foul on the punt. Bill Brown loses one. Don't forget, we've got a doubleheader, and coming up next, another old rivalry, Auburn and Alabama. That's coming up right after what we've got going on here in the Southwest Conference, so stick with us. Then the Heisman Trophy Award. Who will get it? You'll find out later today, right here on CBS. Bill Brown actually lost a yard, second and 11. Pass in motion. Gardere, deep ball. Intended for carry, Cash is tight end, and he was open. The problem was for Pete Gardere is he didn't have an opportunity to really look downfield and get clear vision because William Thomas, number 11, coming from his weak uh, linebacking position, was coming in on the rush. Now watch him come in on the left side of your screen. Thomas is number 11. Weighs about 205 pounds, soaking wet. But he's one heck of a rusher. When you send him to that quarterback, he's the guy that they want to have going. 13 sacks on the season for number 11. And he almost had another there. Third down 11 for the Horn. Four receiver offense for Gardair. Slant ball incomplete intended for Johnny Walker. Once again, it was William Thomas, though, with the pressure on Gardair. That time he took an inside move, and Gardair is trying to look downfield, but he's very much aware of the fact that William Thomas is up in his space. I mentioned that Thomas, watch him take the route inside right there. Good fake move on Chuck Johnson. Johnson's trying hard to push him all the way down there, but Thomas keeps that pressure on. So Alex Waits set to kick again for Texas as their offense has been unable to muster anything so far. Shane Garrett back deep for AM. He hit this a mile in the air. Touchback 
get a flag down a 52 yard punt. I think they're picking up the flag and just using it just indicate that it was a touchback exactly. Texas A&M in front of this one at Memorial Stadium where we anticipate that once they count everyone it'll be a record crowd of 83,000. Texas A&M on their opening march went 80 yards in 13 plays and used 515 which just happens to be what we have left in the first quarter. 13 running plays the last one was golden for Darren Lewis. And really A&M has been able to dominate as you mentioned on the ground. They haven't gone to the air yet and I don't know if they will for a while as long as that running game works. Garrett in motion. Little sprint draw to Lewis. Brian Jones and the Longhorn defense is coming to play now, though. Let's talk about the adjustments maybe that Texas has made on defense. Mike Joyce. On the AM touchdown drive, Brad, the Texas defensive line was getting blocked down and out. The linebackers couldn't get into position to make the stop. The backs were trying to come up and cover, and that resulted in some AM big gains. So they've shifted on the defensive line to allow the linebackers a better look and be able to chase that ball. And in that last series, they were quite effective. Their work for him on the last play as Jones found his target for a loss of one. Second and 11. Wilson. Shane Dronick draped all over it. And it'll be third down and long coming up. Right after talking to defensive Texas defensive coordinator Leon Puller about how come he uses the four-man front, the four-three, which is not all that popular in college football. It certainly is in the NFL, but he said the reason why is because it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, that last play, Texas lined up defensively in an under. You will see an under and over shifted defenses. And what they're trying to do is cut off the corners and the perimeter as we talked about earlier. Shane Garrett, a wide receiver, was the tailback in the eye. You see him now shift to the top of your screen on third and long. A little short pass on a screen. Wilson, I think he got the first down. Had to get to the 30, and it appears they're going to give him the width of one of the officials' spikes across that line, or maybe they aren't. Right on the 30-yard line, first down. Boone Powell made the hit. He's been in on a lot of tackles already. Richardson and Wilson showing good patience on that screen. Now, one of the most difficult things to do is when you see those defensive linemen rushing towards you is to take your time and dump it over there and not rush the pass. See Richardson looking at his cheat sheets down on his wrist. In this game, he's got two cheat sheets, one on each arm. One on each wrist. <laughs> First down, Aggie. End around. Tony Harrison. Forty-nine. Nineteen yards for Harrison. Two key blocks on that play. One by the right guard, John Ellisor, and the other one by the tight end, number 89, Dennis Ransom. Now, Ransom will block his man and seal him down in front. And watch this now. You can't even see anybody pursuing on the play. You see Ransom's block right there. And now watch the lead block out front by Ellisor, 51. He just takes his man and just knocks him right on his back. Ooh. On the option, Lewis lost it and got it back. And you could feel about 70,000 Longhorn fans come to their feet just for that instant. Darren Lewis, a six-footer. You were asking 20 pounds. You were asking Darren Lewis the other day uh, whether or not he and Bucky actually talked when they're pitching the ball. He said, no, there's no time to talk out there. <laughs> He said, once in a while, I'll say, cut it up, meaning you keep it. But he said, other than that, we don't have much time to think about it. Richardson had it tipped, still completed it to midfield. Tony Harrison made the catch, but it's going to be long yardage and another penalty marker down in the Aggie backfield. And that flag flew in late, too, but I think it's going to be a holding call. Let's wait and see. Another personal foul penalty. And Texas defensively is playing it smart. They're not retaliating. You know, normally you get in this kind of a situation, a tough game like this, you retaliate. But it's always the second guy that gets caught. Personal foul on the offense. They third down. And the other thing.
other thing that's important is if you do retaliate, don't get caught. <laughs> this change on that now. He got blocked in the back. Now let's see what he... Oh, yeah, he gets a little shot on Roger Wilson, and Wilson's going, hey, look, it wasn't me. It's Big Matt McCall, 77. There's McCall, and that's the one that threw the penalty. Actually, it was the third one that got it there. <laughs> got a combination thing going down there. The tag team action. They say Jeanette reminds everybody a lot of Steve McMichael, who I played with, with the Chicago Bears. And I know one thing, Steve wouldn't have turned his back on an offensive line. <laughs> third and 23. Richardson, deep ball. Incomplete. Garrett had his hands on it. Yeah, but Stanley Richard had to beat on him. Richard and Barry break it up. Shane Garrett is open on his play. He's up at the he's in motion now. And watch him break outside. You see that little rub there where they try to bring the outside receiver underneath but watch Richard 18 closing in on this play this is how come he's an all-american he separates the receiver from the football Texas a and m Sean Wilson will put it away this one could be returnable by Samuels but he goes the wrong way with it 33 yard kick no return and with 149 to go first quarter the Aggies in front by a touchdown. Texas has it back. Now, if I'm Texas offensively, I'm thinking that one of the things I, I would like to do is get my, my big offensive line, give them an opportunity to, to do a couple of blowout blocks. We just get to lay it out and, and run over some people and then maybe start dropping back and letting Pete Gardier look downfield. First and 10, Longhorns with their own 32. Gardere intercepted. Derek Frazier. Gardier is trying to throw over top and watch Frazier come underneath. He's number three. Now, the, I talked about before letting Texas run the football a little bit, but watch what happens when they try to go to that pass right away. The problem is that they don't have any rhythm yet, Brad. You've got to get your rhythm from running the football. They're running team, basically, and then you start throwing the football. Well, they had only eight yards in total offense before that mistake, and now the Aggies have it back, and here comes Wilson. He got a couple. Peter Gardere is a guy that the coaches say will not lose a ball game for you. But let's take another look at that interception and watch Keith Cash. He's wide open on the play. Here he comes right across the middle of the field. Now, what happened was that the Gardere is looking to go deeper, and uh, Derek Frazier just simply steps in front of it. He's playing down there, zoning it out, picks the ball off. Frazier's second interception of the year gives it to the Aggie offense. Second and seven. Lewis, nice inside moves to the 33. It'll bring up third down at three. Anthony Curl made the tackle. We've got a score. That's not a basketball game in for you. <laughs> Used to play at Arizona State. It was in Tokyo, wasn't it? Wow. And uh, Klinkler had a great day. And he's had a great season. So far, 5,140 yards this season. That's an NCAA record. He also passed for over 70, uh, 700 yards in that ball game. Ty Detmer, though, can surpass that single season mark if he has a 300-yard game or right in that area. Coming up later today. Bucky Richardson calls timeout. Texas A&M. Texas a &M. 25 seconds to go first quarter. Texas A&M in front, 7-0. seconds to go first quarter. Following the Aggie timeout, they've got third down at four. The Aggies hoping for an offside penalty on Texas to give them the automatic first down. Well, let's see which way this goes. I'm not so sure this one's going to go against Texas. Oh, there it is. First down.
inside defensively. One of the tackles fell out of his stance and appeared to end up in that neutral zone. And the Aggies snapped it. Defense, first down. Okay, what happened on the play, it appears, is James Patton, number 92, is going to make his move. And Mike Arthur, being an experienced Simmons, is just going to snap the ball. He knows if he's got that man across the line of scrimmage, then you snap the football. That's why Arthur's an All-American. He knows all the tricks. First and ten. Garrett in motion. On the option, Richardson will keep it. Runner. Yeah, and see, one of the things that's happening for AM that's a very positive for is that they're getting good blocking from the offensive line. They're combination blocking well, cutting off the backside linebackers, and their receivers are going downfield and throwing blocks as well. So that's why they're able to run the ball so successfully uh, on the option. Now, what Texas has to do is, number one, defensive line's got to force the play a little bit more, put some more pressure upfield to try to prevent that option from getting to the corner. Then when you get that, get the force from outside and have your safeties come up and make the stop. With the way the Southwest Conference has become actually a passing conference, Texas doesn't see the option as much as they would have, say, 10 years ago, that's for sure. Wilson, the fullback to the 15. Wilson, 245 pounds, and he certainly uses it to his advantage. I'll tell you what, the way he runs, he deserves a license plate, not a number. <laughs> Shane Ronette made the tackle. Ronette may be the feistiest defender on the Texas squad. And that is about going to do it for the first 15 minutes that has belonged to Texas A&M. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. Texas A&M 7, Texas nothing. We'll return to Memorial Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. We're watching. The Aggies have had reason to sing. They lead 7-0 as we start the second quarter. The fullback, Wilson, got about three. It's been all Texas A&M to this point. Yeah, and right now, Texas A&M is running behind Matt McCall, number 77. They call him USS McCall. And the reason why is because he's 6'8", 288 pounds. Now, the other tackle, Jason Rockhold, 59, is no midget either, 6'8", 278 pounds. Second and seven. There's the yardage difference in A&M's favor. Darren Lewis to the corner. Touchdown! Touchdown of the day from 12 yards out this time. Lane Talbot for the point after. Aggies 14, Longhorns nothing. Brad, we just talked about Jason Rockhold, the uh, left tackle for AM and his guard, Mike Pappas, watched him on the double team right here. Take it out, take out the linebackers, and then the lead block by Robert Wilson, number 20, coming around and leading Darren Lewis into the end zone. Watch this block right here, right now. Takes his man out. We asked him, we said, don't you get tired of blocking? He says, no, that's part of my job. That's why he's going to make a great pro, and this guy's going to make a sensational pro. Darren Lewis, number 25. What? Here's another look at that thing. What combination start Lewis has today, huh? He really has, but the reason why is look at Wilson throwing those blocks, those lead blocks out front for him. That's just outstanding. He got Lance Gunn, number 16. He just knocked him to the turf. R.C. Slocum said, yeah, we're playing smash mouth football today. No cute stuff. It's been a couple of in-your-face drives for scores. That drive for AM started following the Derek Frazier interception. Culminated with a touchdown. There's Darren Lewis. You can't block him down on that. Texas finds himself in a spot 
they were hoping not to get into. And that is being down two touchdowns this early. Could change the game plan a little bit. Benatulius to kick off again. Adrian Walker at the goal line. Walker's got a seam. Forty-one yard return. Well, again, the Texas kickoff return group has given the Longhorn offense a good spot to start. Let's see what they do with it this time. The scorings belong to the Aggies today. Capping an 80-yard drive, it was Darren Lewis from 17 yards out. And he just capped the last 39-yard drive from 12 yards away. 14-0 Texas A&M. Bill Brown to the 45. Now we go to the A&M sideline and Mike Joy. Mike. Brad, one thing you'll never hear is down in front. The A&M students stand the whole game as a testament to the 12th man. A long ago Dixie Classic in postseason play, King Gill came to the game as a football star, but didn't suit up. He was too valuable to the basketball team. Late in the game, he went below the stands, donned an injured player's uniform, and was ready to play. He wasn't called on, but he was the 12th man, and they stand all game long in tribute to him. Bill Brown got it to midfield. Make it Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson at the tailback, a junior out of Odessa. They like his speed, Dan. Yeah, one of the things that they're missing, though, in that backfield right now is uh, Butch Hadnot, who uh, broke a uh, finger. And he's got his left hand uh, in a small cast. It's, uh, it's almost like a soft cast, but uh, what Hadnot gives him is a lot of inside punishing type of running. And he can hit the corner as well with a lot of speed. There's Butch on the sideline. And we got a timeout, Texas. With 13.02 to go in the half, the Longhorns trail by two touchdowns. Texas A&M by 14. We talked about Butch Haddon out of the broken ring finger on his left hand. And there's what it looks like. And that, what he has on the outside is a plastic cast. You mold it to the shape of your hand, and then you almost make it like a splint up, up underneath. They'd like to have him on this short yardage, but Gardner does it by himself.
one look at that uh, touch today, touchdown by Gardner. But the thing I told you about before was Samuel selling the run. You see him going up over the top. The defense is totally collapsed on him. And Gardner runs outside. And everybody goes, hey, the quarterback's got the ball. Yeah, but there's nobody that can stop him. Too late. See you. <laughs> That's it. Oh, the Horn fans are in it now. Fumble. Texas has it. on the tackle as Gardner is still looking downfield now. Atkinson has come in, comes in to make the stop, and right there, he grabs a face mask and does a full rotation with it. 11.50 to go in the half and sold out Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas, where the hometown fans are hoping their Longhorns can come back from a 14-0 deficit to tie this thing up. Pete Gardner just scored on a 50-yard run a moment ago. It all started with Darren Lewis capping an 80-yard march for the first seven of the game. And then he added a 12-yard touchdown. It was 14-0 Texas A&M, but Gardner went 50 yards moments ago. Then Giles with the fumble recovery, and the Longhorns on offense deep in Aggie territory again. They got a timeout on the field. 11:37 to go in the first half. The Longhorns trail by seven, but they've trailed before. Seven times this year they've trailed, and they've come back to win them all except Colorado. So of their ten games, they've been a come-from-behind team, and they are coming back well from being down 14 to nothing here early today. Second and six. A loss on that one. Wilson couldn't find any room outside, and it'll be third down and long. Will Thomas and Kevin Smith in on the stop. Brad, if they're not successful in the play, it's not because they're not getting good blocking up front. Watch this block right here by Stan Thomas, number 51. We talked about this young man being a possible uh, first-round draft choice in the National Football League. You see why. He takes his man off the yard line of scrimmage 10 yards, dumps him on his back. Third and eight for Gardair and the Longhorn offense. Broken up by Derek Frazier, who's made a couple of big plays today. Pass intended for Johnny Walker. Early marker down, illegal procedure, Texas. Which I assume will be declined by the Aggies, although they're thinking about taking it right now. It would. Illegal procedure on the offense. Too many men in the backfield. Be fourth down. Penalty declined. It will bring on the Texas field goal unit and Michael Pollock, who has been 
quite a star for this Texas team. Michael Pollock, here's a guy who spent his summer in Europe <laughs> at American University in Vienna studying uh, political science and uh, German. He's 20 of 24 on the year. He'll try this one from 37 yards away. There's the angle. It's blocked. And I think it's Derek Frazier that got to that. coming hard off the corner and nobody blocks him. You just got to count on the ball getting off and about one and a half to 1.7 seconds. And watch him just come straight in here, takes the right pursuit angle to the ball and just lays out, tips it out, gets those fingertips out there and blocks the ball. Just an excellent route to the football. Then he realized, hey, this, this thing is live. I'm going to get up and go after it. So the fumble recovery by Giles goes for naught. Texas doesn't capitalize thanks to Derek Frazier. And the Aggies work from their own 35. Richardson deep in the middle. Incomplete intended for Oliver. And the reason why Gary Oliver couldn't get open downfield is Stanley Richard, number 18, came over and got a nice bump right off the line of scrimmage. Took it about five yards downfield, maybe a step or two further than he should have, but then he released him. To this point, the Aggies have more yardage than Texans, but the Longhorns have closed it to within a touchdown. The rushing yards has been all a &M, thanks to Darren Lewis and Robert Wilson. Gardere, though, with a 50-yard touchdown run at the time of possession hasn't mattered that much. It's still, though, Texas a and by a touchdown. Lewis spins inside out near the 38-yard line. Todd Hunt in on the stop. Tommy Jeter, number 99 on that Texas uh, defensive line, was the guy responsible for that play. He just stood at the center, Mike Arthur, drove him back into the backfield and collapsed the whole play. Jeter had a nice ball game last week against Baylor, coming back with a strong effort today. There's another interstate battle going on in Athens, Georgia. There's the score from a game already completed. Richardson. Got some pressure. Incomplete. Intended for Gary Oliver again. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the game from each team. And for the 20th consecutive year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Don Wilson in the punt. Chris Samuels back deep for Texas. And again, the Longhorns with 10 up close. Samuels takes the line drive at his own 22. And he got about 15 on the return. Special teams for Texas today have uh, given them a nice effort, Brad, especially the punt return uh, unit. Some big games coming up in the NFL tomorrow. If the playoffs were to start, here's how it looked. The Giants, 49ers, and Bears would all be right there. And the wild card races, you see, Philadelphia, the Eagles have been hot. And they take on the Buffalo Bills in what will be a big game in one of our matchups tomorrow. A lot of you will see the Cowboys and Saints, too, in a later game. It's all tomorrow on CBS Sports. Gardner lost the handle trying to go up with a throw. William Thomas, number 11, came in and just swatted the ball out of his hand. It's almost like when you're playing basketball and you see the guy holding the ball, you just try to knock it out. Well, that's what Thomas did on his rush. Watch him on, the lower, on top of it. Yeah, watch him right here, number 11. Watch the rush that he gets. He's just going to take a swipe out at the quarterback's hand right there. See the guard stepping out trying to block him out. And that was number 58, Jeff Boyd, who tried to get him. Thomas has really raised some havoc today in the Texas backfield. Gardner goes down. John Miller, the nose tackle. Miller 
there's the nose tackle and watch the effort that he gives a second effort as he comes around on the pass rush he's knocked down to the ground he's actually on one leg and one knee and then he just gets up and keeps scrambling right there and just reaches around and grabs Pete guard air but that's a nice second and third effort and now the long orange faced with third and 20. Recreation in parks, Major. Well, you know one thing, he knows how to have some recreation out there. And he's as big as a park. <laughs> Four wide out group for the Longhorn. Gardair deep for Walker. Incomplete. Right there with it was Kevin Smith stride for stride. And the problem for Pete Gardair is that he's not getting enough time to step up in the pocket. That time the pressure was brought by Marcus Buckley, number nine, number coming 80. in and uh, delivering the blow to Gardair just as he wanted to release the ball. And with that pressure comes an 0 for 5 start throwing the football for Peter Gardair. He does have the Texas touchdown, though, on the ground. Waits to punt away to Garrett. Somehow. Got off a 27-yard kick. He avoided the rush much like that last week and had a 66-yard punt. Well, he didn't get as much out of that one, but he avoided disaster back there. And uh, that was uh, Larry Horton, I believe, who's down on the field. But watch this effort here by Smith. I think it is number 26. Comes in on the play now. Watch. Ducks up underneath. Tucks the ball up underneath. Let Smith go by. Then gets the secondary kick right there. Lucky to get it off because Larry Horton, 39, came up and threw the last block. And I think he is still down on the field. 8-13 to go in the half. Texas A&M with a touchdown lead. Thirteen to go in the half. Horton on the sideline, apparently all right, and the Aggie offense works from its own 49. Richardson floats one out. Lewis made the catch and got it to the 44-yard line. Stanley Richard is the leader of that Texas defensive secondary. They call him the sheriff. And a lot of people think he's uh, a lot like Johnny Johnson, who played here and who's with Mike Joy right now. And who today, Brad, was inducted into the University of Texas Hall of Honor. Congratulations. And you're telling me about this crowd was very different when you played here and were pretty much expected to win. Well, yeah, I think back when I played here, uh, we had a crowd that was more laid back. It was almost as if they were, they were uh, accustomed to us winning. I think the last couple of years, Texas has been down, and so all of a sudden, they're on their way back up, and the crowd's gotten involved with it, and it's kind of exciting. Have you ever heard a noise like we're hearing this afternoon? I've never I've never been around anything like this before. You can feel the electricity. You can feel the excitement in the crowd, and I think that's what I'm speaking of. Brad and Dan, this is by far the loudest, most involved crowd we've seen at any game this season. All right, Mike, thanks. Thank you, Johnny. Did you played a little pro football, huh? Yeah, sure did, uh, with the Rams. And, you know, I know he, he wasn't used to those loud crowds out there in, in Los Angeles. Because they were kind of cooled out. But Johnny used to bring it a little bit when he'd come up and meet you on the corner. As you saw, Bucky Richardson take it for 13 yards and a first down a and This time, the pitch to Lewis. He's in trouble. Number 25, Darren Lewis. Ryan Jones drags him down. Darren got out to the corner, tried one of his MC Hammer moves and put the brakes on out there. Now, here, here's uh, Lewis going out to the corner. Watch him, number 25. He's going to take off, but he, the pursuit is going to catch him. And that's Brian Jones, number 60, and Lance Gunn, number 60. Now, watch Lewis here. He gets out. Uh-oh, no, they've got... Ah! Tries to put on the brakes, and he reverses back the other way. But, hey, no luck. Jones went right with it. And it's second and 13 with the loss. Richardson. Incomplete, intended for Garrett. Mark Berry was there with him, and it will be third down at 13. We talked to Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator of uh, A&M, and he said one of the things they wanted to do today was spread out the formations a lot, try to get Texas spread out across the field vertically as well as horizontally, and that way they felt they were going to have a little bit more success running the football once you get past the line of scrimmage. He said we'd see Garrett and Harrison on reverses. We've already seen Harrison run one. Third down at 13.
Richardson through the hands of Oliver incomplete. And Darren Lewis, I believe, is a man down. Darren Lewis may have been out in front of Bucky Richardson trying to get a block, and he's still down for AM. Yeah, I'm not so sure he didn't get run into by some of the linemen. Uh, I, I think that some of the linemen and everybody, that he got tangled up in there because they were trying to set up. You see him trying to screen off that side. Now, watch here as uh, Lewis goes down to throw the cut block, and uh, Oscar Giles ran over top of him. But he threw a nice block on the play. 6.34 to go in the half. We'll check on Darren Lewis when we come back. Players and great teams are a big part of the 76-year tradition of the Southwest Conference. In 1989, Andre Ware became the Southwest Conference's fifth Heisman Trophy winner. And four teams finished among the nation's top 20. And this conference will be here and it'll be strong long after I'm gone as a coach and probably long after I'm on this earth. The Southwest Conference, home to your heroes, then and now. Lane Talbot to attempt a 51-yard field goal. Got a lot of leg into it, but it went left on it. A victory of sorts for the Texas defense. So now the Longhorns and Pete Guard Air can go back to work with six and a half minutes to play in this half as they look to try to tie it up before intermission. We have not heard from the tight end carry cash number 19. Uh, that's one of Pete Gardere's uh, excellent tools to use and uh, so far we haven't seen anything going to him. I expect him to start going to those wide outs now. Second man through. Phil Brown got a little bit of yardage. The Longhorns, the Southwest Conference champions, and they've been national champions many times as well, starting with David McWilliams, their head coach at All-American in 63. National champions in 69 behind quarterback James Street and company. Steve Worcester, and what a great team that was in 1970. Earl Campbell, they were unbeaten going into their bowl game. Fred Akers in 83. 11-1 club, 9-1 coming into this one are the Longhorns, but they trail by a touchdown. Gardere somehow got two yards out of that. Quentin Coriat in on the stop. Let's find out about the condition of Darren Lewis. Mike Joy's got more on the sideline, Mike. He's going to be okay, Brad, and back in the game. He took a hard shot to that right shoulder. They were working with him on right arm mobility for a little bit, but uh, he's on the bench relaxing, getting a cold drink. He's okay. He'll be back. That's good news. He asked us to pass along a um, uh, hello to his sister, who was in a very serious auto accident. Can't attend the game today. He said that uh, she's very special to him, means a great deal to him. So we're going to pass that along. Kimberly, we're glad you're back home and doing okay. Your brother's all right, too. Third and five. Pass to Cash. First down, Texas. Gardere's first completion of the day. And I tell you why Gardere was so successful in the play. That time, William Thomas, number 11, coming from his outside linebacking position, came up inside. That gave the soft corner to Gardere. He's able to get out on the corner there, look downfield, and find Kerry Cash, number 11, uh, Keith Cash, for the pass. Cash does a nice job of hauling that one in. And I'm sure his, his twin brother, uh, Kerry, would like to get a pass <laughs> as well, a tight end. Keith in motion. Adrian Walker. Cartwheels to the 48 of Texas A&M. Oh, but what a lead block by number 39, Patrick Wilson, on that play. Grooves and Atkinson combined on the stop. Wilson goes downfield about uh, five or six yards and just gives his body up. Walker comes out and Samuels goes back into the Texas backfield. Walker and 
Cash caught out there to the bottom of your screen. Second and six. Wilson. So much of a factor in when you're running the football is how you get the blocking on the backside. And that time, Stan Thomas, number 51, right here, throws a nice block on the backside. And that's what allows Wilson to break the ball back. See, because originally he wanted to head over to the left side. He says, no, get good blocking on that backside. Stay with it. Wide receivers downfield, number 11. That's Keith Cash. He's throwing a block, and that simply springs the running back. Under four minutes in the half. Texas trails by a touchdown. Walker brought down by Coriat at the 23. Adrian Walker and Chris Samuels continue to shuttle in and out of that Longhorn backfield. Second and six. Wilson. First and goal, Texas. Hey, block it over on the left side. Chuck Johnson, Dwayne Miller, and Dirk McDonald in center. Watch this blocking up by this side of the line, the offensive line for Texas. Removing the line of scrimmage and reestablishing it, and that allows the running back to get outside, hit the corner hot, and he is rolling. Patrick Wilson, number 39. Two good runs in a row. First and goal for the long haul. Two tight ends. Wilson again. Brought down by Chris Cruz. Chris Crooms just said, hey, that one run was enough of that breaking it back on us. Uh, he comes up on that backside and fills and supports back there. This is a spot where Texas many times likes to throw the lob because they've got the cash twins, Keith and Carey, both at 6'4". And keep in mind, they'll be working against our uh, corners and Derek Frazier, who's six feet tall, and Kevin Smith, who's six feet tall, and Crooms back there is 6'3", though, the strong safety, working against the tight end. Second and goal, Texas at the A&M eight-yard line. Gardair to the corner. Touchdown! Six yards in nine plays. 409. The Longhorns used to put it in the end zone. I like to kick. Carter and Garrett back deep for AM. Garrett on the hop at the eight. 
Buried at the 25. Texas has been getting excellent support from their special teams today, Brad, and that used to be a, a problem for them, but they worked a great deal in on it in practice. We saw it the other day, and, and it's really paying off for them. We saw it in the TCU game. We're seeing it again today. 2.15 left in the half for Bucky Richardson and the AM offense. Darren Lewis back in there with a blue shoulder. He's the tailback in the eye. Here he comes. Number 25, Darren Lewis. He got five to the 30. AM feels pretty comfortable. They've been throwing the football a little bit on first down. That time they go to the draw play with Lewis, and he's fairly successful on it. He is a uh, sports management major at Texas A&M, and says he might put all of that uh, learning to pretty good use in a couple of couple of months. Outside goes Lewis. Nice stiff arm, got him about three yards. Darren Lewis started the scoring in this football game as A&M went 70 yards in their opening march. Darren from 17 yards out. And then they added another touchdown from 12 yards away to give A&M the 14-point lead. But Texas came back. Keith Gardere, 50 yards on the option keeper, made it 14-7. And then Gardere to Keith Cash has tied it up. Third and three. Richardson keeps and got the first down. At first, I think he was trying to draw Texas offside. Couldn't do that, and then called his own number. And, and the thing I like about Richardson when he runs the football is he runs it with a great deal of aggressiveness. He, he's not built like most quarterbacks. He's got excellent speed at about 4.5 or 4.6 in the 40. But he also takes that, that opportunity when he gets downfield to either jump over the defender or punish him. All of last year was missed with a knee injury. Suffered against Texas here two years ago. One thirty-four till halftime. Play action. Oliver incomplete. One twenty-seven to go in the half. And in front of a sellout crowd at Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas, Brad Nessler, Dan Jiggins, and Mike Joy having fun with about 83,000. With one twenty-seven to go in the half, a tie game. It's everything we expected so far. R.C. Slocum's 8-2-1 Aggies going to the Holiday Bowl against BYU. The Longhorns already know they've got a date in the Mobile Cotton Bowl on January 1 as Southwest Conference champs. Whoa, did Lewis take a shot at the end of that run? But a nifty run it was. It's a nice opportunity for the Texas to uh, bring their shock to Nation Tour back home. Um, to Austin before they go on to the Cotton Bowl and you know that these kids are kind of pumped up. They've been talking about this thing. Obviously it's on their minds, but you know that the Mobile Cotton Bowl doesn't mean as much to them as if they can win this game right now. This is the immediate thing. Win the A&M game because this is for state rights, you know. And David McWilliams, David McWilliams says this club's been able to focus all year on the task at hand. Richardson again. I don't know. Lance Gunn finally put him down. He may be about a half yard short. Look at Bucky Richardson, your normal quarterback, a pad hanging out, elbow pads all over the place. Yeah, John Ellisor is giving him a little housekeeping there, getting him squared away. I like all the stuff that Richardson wears, though. You know, he's got elbow pads, he's got knee braces. I told you he acts like a linebacker or offensive lineman. See, he's got the whole complement of things going there. 
both arms. He's got wristbands on both arms with cheat sheets on them to tell him the plays when they signal in. Now, the way that thing works is those things, the plays are numbered, so he gets a number in from the sideline and simply looks down on his wrist, and he's able to run that play. All tied with one second left. Although I have decided to forego my final... Final play of the half as Richardson takes a knee to use up that remaining second. It was a penalty on the last play, not a timeout. What A&M was trying to do is drain the clock all the way down and go, uh, go into the locker room with the ball game tied. Don't want to make a foolish mistake at this point in the game. So, indeed, they will go to the locker room, all tied with the Texas Longhorns, dead even. Let's go to Andrea Joyce in New York. Andrea? Thank you, Brad. The Downtown Athletic Club has been awarding the Heisman Trophy since 1935, and we are here in the Heisman Room on the Day of Decision. Coming up in this halftime, how Notre Dame, as you might expect, has dominated the Heisman. We'll be hearing from some of the past Notre Dame winners. Also, a look at Colorado's best chance to win the school's first Heisman. I'll be back with James Brown and Mike Francesa after this word and a message from your local stations. People love the convenience of fax machines. What most of us don't like are funny paper faxes that curl up and are hard to read. That's why Xerox makes more kinds of plain paper fax machines than anyone else for documents that are easy to read and a pleasure to handle because they're on good old plain paper. Plain paper fax machines from Xerox, the way to put it together. Putting it together. Faxing, scanning, copying, printing. Xerox, the document company. You begin with raw steel. Shape it with fire, muscle, and sweat. Polish it to razor sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men for the medal to be Marines. This is CBS. When I say the men's warehouse has the same designer suit, I mean it has the details and features that make that designer suit so special. The quality lining, the fine fabric, even the coordinated buttons. The same quality workmanship for a whole lot less. Like this suit. At the men's warehouse, it's $2.95. At the mall, the same designer suit is $4.25. I guarantee it. The men's warehouse, North Park Shopping Center, across the freeway from Parkdale Mall. For quality, you can hold on to. Let Schmidt Saw and Knife introduce you to these fine products from Bosch. Of course, Bosch circular saws are designed to handle this. But they're also designed to handle this. Bosch makes jigsaws to handle precise cuts like these. And aggressive cuts like this. Available at Schmidt Saw and Knife, 2510 South 4th Street in Beaumont. Hi, I'm Joe Francis, owner of Bargain Warehouse Carpet. For the past 12 years, we haven't started early enough with our holiday reminders, and many customers didn't buy their carpet soon enough to have it installed before the festivities began. If new floor covering is in your plans, why not come in now while you can still buy three rooms of fine sculptured carpet for only $390 and have it installed before the rush begins. By the way, we have a special deal for our Orange and Port Arthur customers. Bargain Warehouse Carpet, East Tex Freeway, exit Lawrence Drive, and make the loop. You're watching KFDM Channel 6, Beaumont, Port Arthur, Orange. It's halftime of Texas A&M, Texas, and the score is tied. 14 all. Welcome back, everyone, to the Heisman Room. Mike, before we get into college football, some stunning news from college basketball. UNLV succeeded in getting a compromise from the NCAA this week. It sure stunned me. In fact, two weeks ago, I said no chance they win this appeal because they hadn't presented any new evidence. I was absolutely wrong about that. What happened was the Committee on Infractions stunned everybody in the NCAA. They said, we need to look at this in, in terms of being more flexible. And also, they felt, we don't want any more litigation with UNLV. We want to get past this. And they did that. And now UNLV will play this year. A fair thing for Johnson and Augman, who stayed around and are terrific players. So the best team in the country 
back in the tournament. All right, now back to college football this week. Curly Hallman was na named the new coach at LSU, and that leaves an opening now at Southern Mississippi. What do you hear? And Southern Miss may have a better idea. They may be looking for former Clemson head coach Danny Ford. He has a relationship with the athletic director, Bill McClellan. If they can come up with the money, so the miss may get Danny Ford. All right, now we are going to take you to the scoreboard right now for a late score that came in early this morning from Tokyo. It was Houston over Arizona State, 62 to 45. And Mike, listen to some of these stats for David Klingler. Seven <laughs> touchdown passes last night, 716 yards. 716, is passing. that all? Is that yeah, all? <laughs> that was from last night. How about those stats? I tell you, did anyone tell him that the votes were already in for the Heisman? <laughs> he probably could have picked up a couple of more, that's for sure. All right, David Klingler did have to travel far to play as last game last night and talking about trips during Thanksgiving Colorado's Heisman hopeful Eric Bieniemy and a couple of his friends jumped in a car to pay social calls on their families and they happened to dance their way to Eric's birthplace New Orleans step out of folk on the step out of folk on the step Eager. Two different sides of the story, you know. It's a side of the story where I'm out with my frat brothers, and it's a side of the story where I'm out just sitting around, just relaxing, going through a relaxation type period. At home, Eric learned generosity from Dad, Eric Sr. He can be your best buddy. His personality is that uh, Eric accepts everybody positive. You have to prove yourself negative to Eric. And once you find out he's negative, well, you're a negative person, he won't have anything to do with you. Uh, he's got so much spirit and character in himself. You know, he, it, when we're down, he doesn't let the team down. And on the field, he has a fire. Uh, when he makes a mistake, he wants to make up for it. You know, and guys see that type of enthusiasm, and, and he just excites us. Basically, as a ball player, when you're on the sidelines, you're observing the defense, or as a defensive player observing the offense, you're always thinking about what can you do next to help out the team. And that's always going through your mind. It's like an incentive, some motive to want to get you back out there. Now a senior times together with his teammates will soon be passed. And when the enemy reflects, Eric, as his father indicated, is always positive. Being at the University of Colorado, I think college football, being a student athlete there has really been a growing experience for me. I've experienced many trials and tribulations there that I think that has just made me a better man. You know, what I would like to leave with college students there is that never give up on anything. Never. You know, while he hasn't grown in terms of stature, he's only 5'7", and he is very strong, he has become a very consistent back. You know, little backs are in vogue in the NFL right now. He's 5'7", he's very strong, he can run inside, he showed that in the Nebraska game, has the speed to pop it outside. I think it'll be a late first round pick. He's going to be a very good back. All right, Mike, as you know, a Colorado player has never won the Heisman. The closest was way back in 1937 when Byron Wizard White finished second. But at Notre Dame, Heismans are as common as paperweights. Notre Dame sings of college football history. Appropriately, the Irish have the most Heisman winners. Seven, a procession that began in 1943 with Angelo Bertelli. It was wartime, and I was a... Uh... Uh, uh, at boot camp, Paris Island in the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve. One day they uh, handed me a telegram and told me I had won the Heisman Trophy and it was uh, quite a feeling and I was, uh, of course, tickled pink. Well, I won the Heisman in 1947 and that was after Notre Dame had an undefeated, untied season and the first one that they had had since 1930. But it was a big surprise to me. It certainly wasn't anything that any individual is after at Notre Dame. It was a team effort. It was a, a great honor. And, and the best thing about the whole thing was uh, going to New York and uh, they wined us and dined us for four days. My mother went, she never was in New York and she flew in a plane, she never flew in a plane and oh, they just treated us like a king and queen. Well, to win the Heisman Trophy is uh, like a badge you wear the rest of your life. Of course, I'm always favorable to a lineman winning the Heisman Trophy. I think linemen are just as good athletes as some of the backs are. If I had not had been a Notre Dame quarterback at the university there, having played on a team that won only two football games, I would not have won the Heisman Trophy. It's as simple as that. And when we come back, James Brown will tell us of the players some consider Georgia's best ever. And we're not talking about Herschel as we continue with Heisman Day on CBS. It's, um, it's almost like cheating. 
you get a good shave, and you don't get the, the, the negative side effects. I'm very pleased with the Norelco. It's close. I don't have any, no, no stubble, no, no, uh, feels like a baby's butt. Now, Norelco's patented lift and cut system has been improved to lift each hair and cut it even closer without the blades touching your skin. The idea of shaving is to get a, you know, a smooth appearance, smooth skin. And if you're going to do it, you might as well be comfortable doing it. The new Norelco, a new level of closeness and comfort. Merry Christmas! Hey, who's this? Season's eatings from Kentucky Fried Chicken. holiday bucket of chicken, a party-sized bucket of hot wings, or a holiday meal, each for just $9.99. So, really, what do we owe you? To unlock your body's potential, we proudly offer Soloflex. 24 old-fashioned iron pumping exercises each correct in form and balance. All on the simple machine that fits in the corner of your home. For a free brochure, call anytime. Looking cops. They said we're too stressed. Fighting crime. Ooh, you're all under arrest. And fighting their shrink. We'll get her a drink and a tattoo. She's gonna fit right in. Broken badges tonight. Look who's busting up the men's club. I play poker. I never heard of... No peaky around the world. She's making it up. And taking wood to the cleaners on Evening Shade. Then it's the case of the missing furniture. In other words, they lost it. The core doesn't lose things. It merely directs them to unplanned destination. Major your dad after Evening Shade Monday. You are looking at the original Heisman Trophy, the focal point of the downtown athletic club lobby. Now to 1968, only one Heisman was made for the winner, but since then, Two have been made so one can rest in each school's trophy case. And right now, I'm standing by the portrait of 1942 Heisman winner Frank Sinkwich, and each Heisman winner has his portrait in this room. Of course, the ribbon sink signifies Sinkwich's death this past year, as we now remember an athlete they called Fireball Frankie. Frank Sinkwich often played hurt, but it seemed appropriate that upon accepting the 1942 Heisman, he was wearing the uniform of the United States Marines. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. And let me tell you, this is one of the biggest moments of my life, which is two up to date. One is receiving this trophy, and the other was when the United States Marines let me put this uniform on. The 1942 Orange Bowl belonged to Sinkwich. He passed for three touchdowns and ran for one. He invented the drunk play in the Orange Bowl game. He was running like that lawnmower spitting out grass. He'd see a hole, he'd dart into that hole and run 15, 18, 20 yards, which is the origin of the draw play. Nobody had ever coached the draw play. He was very courageous, too. You know, back in 41, he broke his jaw. They devised a certain mask for him to play with and continue playing. You know, there's not many people that would... Uh, endure that kind of punishment. Uh, he was just uh, a tremendous competitor. He always was positive in his outlook, and, and he was always loyal and never critical. Uh, he was not a fair-weather friend. I just uh, will always remember him as a wonderful person, loyal, modest, and uh, I've never seen a more dynamic, uh, effective uh, tailback than Frank Singer. He had many friends. Sinkwich was one of three wartime Heisman winners who, believe it or not, received a certificate instead of a trophy. That was because of metal shortages during the war. However, Sinkwich and the other World War II winners, Angelo Bertelli in 1943 and Les Horvath in 1944, folks did get their trophies that after the war. Of course, Frank Sinkwich's alma mater has been struggling a little bit this season. A young team trying to rebuild. Georgia is trailing Georgia Tech. 13-9, that game is in the second quarter. And, Mike, how important is it for Georgia Tech to come up with a big win today, though, not just a win? Well, they got out poorly today, trailed Georgia 9 nothing. They've come back to take the lead now. They not only need to win today, they need to win impressively if they're thinking about that national championship, and they are. Okay, and we will be back with more after this.
You can get a spot phone for $26.99 with a proof of purchase from 7-Up. Hello? Asher, sure it's for you. You've heard it said before. It's not just what you say. It's how you say it. Laser jet printers from Hewlett Packard. They'll get you noticed. Radio Shack sale price compact disc players are showing up everywhere this Christmas. Under Bob's dashboard. This high-powered Optimus CD player fits any car. Under Debbie's pillow. With this portable CD, she can listen to music anywhere. Under our bookshelves, where we can all enjoy this Optimus programmable CD player with remote control. Put a sale-priced CD player under your tree this Christmas. Only at Radio Shack, America's technology store. Nobody compares for Christmas shopping. The right side feels like it's doing more because I feel something in my scalp. The head and shoulders side, I feel nothing at all. Both have a dandruff ingredient, but Denerex adds an extra anti-itch medicine you can feel working. There definitely was a difference with Denerex. Got a cold? Gotta feel better? You gotta get relief with Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Medicine. It works. It's fast. It works fast. When you gotta get relief fast, you gotta get Alka-Seltzer Plus. And now, for sinus and allergy relief, try new Alka-Seltzer Plus Sinus Allergy Medicine. What do you do when you're waiting for the Heisman announcement? Well, you play football, of course. You see some of the leading candidates, Raghib Ismail, Sean Moore, and Eric Bieniemy this morning. Elsewhere, the Division III playoffs are underway, and we'll return for the second half of Texas A&M Texas after this. As a National Merit Scholar, I had many choices. But once I came to A&M and saw the facilities, my mind was made up. A&M is one of the nation's largest universities, but it doesn't seem like it. Everybody's friendly, and our professors really care. Texas A&M has become a national leader in research, and we're proud of that. But first and foremost, we are teachers, and research helps us be better teachers. The heart of a great university is its library, an essential resource for pursuing knowledge and exploring ideas. The University of Texas at Austin has the nation's sixth largest academic library, an astounding quantity of materials that is matched by its quality and diversity. From the latest scientific information to the earliest printed books, the university's library, a reflection of our civilization, a foundation for learning in the information age. The Longhorns spotted the Aggies 14 points, but a battle back to draw even at halftime at 14. And we'll return to Memorial Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. We're breaking. CBS Sports coverage of today's CFA game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. UPS now offering 1030 a.m. guaranteed overnight air delivery. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, no when to say when. Back in Austin, Texas to start the third quarter. We're dead even at 14. Along with Mike Joy, Brad Nessler, Dan Jiggins. And a good first half. Texas A&M controlled things as far as statistics, though. The running game really controlled things for them. And as a result, they got time of possession. And what that's what they really needed. But Texas came back and got back on the board. Pete Gardier did a nice job of directing his club downfield and getting a, a touchdown pass to Cash as well. During his numbers on the day so far, not very impressive, but effective. Only two completions. One was a touchdown to Keith Cash. He ran for 50 yards for the other Texas score. So Gardair, as the Texas coaches would tell you, all he does is win. And so far, he's got the Longhorns even as we're set for the third quarter. Samuels will bring it out. And it proves to be a good choice. He got it to the 24-yard line. 
right as the second half gets underway. Let's keep one thing in mind. We talked about how Texas comes back in the second half of ball games. A lot of that, I'm sure, can be credited to their off-season workout program where they got up at 5 in the morning, started working out at 6 a.m., uh, and lifted weights this, this year as opposed to last year. They lifted three or four times a week and not uh, just uh, two or three. So that uh, really gives you an advantage, I think, coming into the second half. The coaches say without the senior leadership, they could have never pulled off those off-season workouts and made it work to their advantage. Gardair. Whoa, fumble. The Aggies say they have it, but did the ball go out of bounds? I think so. If you're blocking on a play, you can never stop blocking. Watch Stan Thomas, number 51, the offensive tackle. He's in pretty good shape working against number 95. That's Albert Jones. But watch, Stan Thomas stops right now. Jones doesn't stop because he realizes that the quarterback is still running the football. And right there he comes in, puts that shot on, and the ball rolls out. Now, the question was, did A&M have control? No, before the ball rolled out of bounds. The officials said that they did not have it before sliding out. And so Texas will keep the ball. Gardair wants to throw a screen to Wilson. The Aggies defense has come out fired up for this half. Marcus Buckley made the tackle. This is going to be a real hard fought game right down to the wire. I talked to a lot of the players on the uh, Bears that have gone to these two teams. McMichael, Steve McMichael went to Texas, and uh, Jerry Pond knows one of the uh, guys that went to AM, and they've all got big bets on this game uh, in the locker room. So this one means a lot to all of those guys. John Roper played at AM. Look at how the Longhorns turned it around in the second quarter. They were really struggling until Gardere's touchdown run got them going. Stephen Clark. Stephen Clark, the big 6'6 tight end from New Orleans, Louisiana, on a little crossing pattern, makes a great grab, just reaches in and pulls it out. He extends himself. Watch number 82. That's Stephen Clark, the tight end. He's substituting in for Kerry Cash, number 19, but you see him flash right across the screen. Now watch this effort to go up, come back, and reach back for the ball. Beautiful reception on the play. His best game ever a year ago against the Aggies. Four catches, including a touchdown. Samuels just keeps fighting to the 44. Jones made the stop. I kind of get the feeling that this second half is going to come down to a little Texas tough. We're going to find out who's really, who's really bad. Let's watch the, li the line action up front. Left tackle is going to pull out. That's uh, Chuck Johnson, number 79. Excuse me, that's uh, 53. That is Dwayne Miller. Nice lead block in there. Pancake. Give him one. Little syrup, little butter. Second and five. Bill Brown. Nice stiff arm. Almost got him the first down. Chris Crooms ran him out. Talk about what the Longhorns did in the locker room. Mike Joy, what do you have? Well, the two speeches were remarkably similar and predictable. Play good, solid football. Don't make the turnovers, the big mistakes. It'll be a tough game to the wire. The difference in the Texas locker room, they said, we are a comeback team. We've trailed in seven of ten games, won six of those seven, and want that seventh one today. i tell you what, the blocking they're getting out of Stephen Clark, number 82, a tight end. They'll get it. Third down, full house. First down. it down inside the AM 44. Good punishing blocking up front. And Cash coming out of the backfield, number 11. That's Keith Cash. He's normally a wide receiver. Goes with the fake. That draws the defense in. And allows Bill Brown, 29, to get the first down. He Much the same help. type of play they used, only they faked it for the 50-yard guard. That's Air right, to, to Chris Samuels. Wilson is met head on. John Miller, the nose man, on the bottom. Quentin Coriat finished him off. 
third quarter in Austin, Texas at Memorial Stadium. 82,518 on hand for this one, the second largest crowd in the history of this facility. And they've seen the Longhorns and Aggies battle to a 14-all draw. Should not go without mention that John Miller, the nose tackle for A&M, is having a nice day. I think that's his sixth tackle. He's got two sacks already. Second and ten, Longhorn. All their wideouts right there to the right side. That's the way they go. Samuels can't hold it. It'll be third and ten. So again, Gardere has not had the best of numbers so far. But it's still a tie game. You see some of the other college football action going on. Division three semifinals today. So most people don't know where Hofstra University is. It's out on Long Island. Hempstead, Long Island. <laughs> I grew up about 20 or 30 miles away. <laughs> That's the only reason why I know that. Third and ten. Gardere in trouble. Coriat and Thomas and company there to drop him. Yeah, I don't think he'd get a half a sack for this. I think he'd get a third of a sack because there were three guys responsible for it. Buckley, number nine. Number 11, Thomas, comes back in. He's working against Stan Thomas, no relation, obviously. And they get the quarterback down on the ground. And Alex Wade will have to give it up. They put a lot of pressure on him earlier, and he avoided being tackled and got away a short kick. This time, he lays up a nice punt. Shane Garrett at the 12. Garrett to the 30. Lance Gunn made the tackle. 11.03 to go, third quarter. Brad Nessler, Dan Jiggins, and Mike Joy in Austin, Texas with 11.03 to go, third quarter. Darren Lewis follows some strong blocking for about five yards. Another great interstate rival coming up next. Auburn and Alabama will get together. And Alabama's really warmed up after a slow start. And then the Heisman Trophy Award show. And rejoice, James Brown, Mike Francesa, the whole crew will be there. We'll find out who's going to win college football's most prestigious award. Live from the downtown athletic club in New York City. Ten and a half to play third quarter. Wilson lost it. Texas has it. Just as he got to the line of scrimmage, somebody hit him low and it popped the ball out. Change on that made the uh, picked up the football. But watch Wilson as he goes through the line of scrimmage. Somebody's gonna come on right there and they trip him up. It looks like Jeter's foot, maybe number 99. Tommy Jeter may have kicked that ball out. And Shane Gronett with a fumble recovery gives it back to Texas. Blitz. <laughs> to the 33-yard line. It'll be second and seven. Texas did a good job of adjusting to that blitz spread that you called out by just simply going back the other way, and their blocking picked it up backside. Otherwise, they get stuck in the backfield. Those turnovers for A&M both belong to Robert Wilson. Second and seven for the Longhorns. Johnny Walker right on the bottom of your screen. Keep pass to the top. Here comes the end around. They want to throw. He'll keep it. He wanted to go to Johnny Walker, I think, Dan. And Johnny could not escape the good coverage of Kevin Smith, number 26, downfield. Keith Cash has an excellent arm to throw the football, but Walker, number one, working on the bottom of the field. Watch the coverage that Smith gives him downfield. He never lets up on the coverage, and he's getting some deep help, too. Just stays with us, says, hey, this thing's a fake. I'm just going to go back there and cover. Walker wanted to sell it as an end around, and so he kind of trotted out there and then hit another gear, but it was too late. Blitz again. 
Flag down at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if the Aggies were offside. They were coming with the inside blitz again. The Aggies say it's against Texas, and it is. Whoops, it's both ways. Illegal procedure and an offside call. Offsetting penalties will do it again. Saying that uh, it's A&M offside. Texas did not have enough men on the line of scrimmage. So apparently, uh, with all the formations that they're using today, one of them was a man short. Lynn Amity says of his offense, you got to find us. And he will run some people in motion. Third and five. Gardner for Cash. Incomplete. Kerry Cash and Keith Cash both were there. Pass intended for Kerry, number 19. A&M is continuing to blitz Texas. Now watch the blitz coming. And number one, you got Thomas always coming on a hard rush. But now they start to send people up inside. And what they're trying to do is disrupt the flow and disrupt the blocking for Texas. And it's, they're doing a pretty good job because Thomas is coming around, put a lot of backside pressure on Gardere, and he's unloading the football when he's not comfortable doing it. Michael Pollock will try to break the tie from 48 yards away, but it's no good. Way to the left. We're still even. Pollock's missed one and had one block today. 8.47 to go third quarter. Still, we're tied at 14. Eight forty-seven to go third quarter. Tied at 14. And AM with the ball back. Play action. Richardson in trouble. Somehow got away and threw incomplete. Intended for Doug Carter. Good pressure by Boone Powell and uh, Brian Jones. Powell number 56 and Jones number 60. Both of them coming from linebacking positions. Let's go down to Mike Joy on the field. Mike? Well, Texas had a chance, and they were on the big play offense. Kerry Cash was called for him to come around the end and throw deep to Johnny Walker, who had made the crossover, and he was open. But Cash got smothered before he could even think about unloading the football, and they turned it over a and with the ball. Hey, I bet you Johnny Walker told you he was open. He wasn't open. Kevin Smith had coverage on him. <laughs> Depends on who you ask. Second and ten for the Aggies. A three-wide receiver look here, but on the option, it's Richardson. And he picked up a couple. That's it. A&M started so strong, but their last few possessions haven't netted them much. There are the results. Fumble, punt, missed field goal into the half, and then that one, they tried to drain the clock, and then a fumble as they came back out for the second half. You know, the fumble recovery by Giles in the second quarter ended up with a blocked field goal Pollock tried that Frazier blocked in the last one, drawn at the fumble recovery, and Pollock missed the field goal. So both fumbles haven't cost the Aggies so far in this game, so they're lucky with that. Richardson. Incomplete intended for Dennis Ransom as tight end. Lance Gunn and Brian Jones were there. Lower left of your screen, that's Lance Gunn, number 16. Watch him come in on the coverage. But an outright by Ransom, and really he breaks back in and just cuts right across the receiver, the tight end, Dennis Ransom, number 89. John Wilson to punt. Chris Samuel back for Texas. They're coming after it. He got it away. Samuels from the 31. He got 15 again on the return. 42 to go third quarter. We're tied at 14. Another nice punt return by Chris Samuels has the Texas offense working at its own 46. And there is Samuels. He got a couple off the left side. Mike Joy is an update on the AM quarterback. Mike? 
Bucky Richardson limped off. He'd been limping the last couple of plays, and uh, he took a foot to the right shin, Brad. They've been giving him a bit of local anesthetic, uh, trying to cool that one down for him, but apparently it is a little ginger, and he did walk off with a noticeable limp, so he's got a seat here and going to rest it out for a bit. Remember, that's the knee that was injured two years ago against Texas. He sat out a whole season, a lot of rehab, and with a knee injury, it's like having an airbag in your car. You're never quite sure what you have till you hit something. And he's hit a lot of people today. Johnny Walker. First down, Texas. New Johnny Walker's been a little bit too quiet in this ball game. He's ready to break out. This is a young man that's going to be playing Major League Baseball probably this spring for the Atlanta Braves, but uh, you know what? He's maybe a right fielder in baseball, but he's an excellent wide receiver as well. Good little cut in there, push the defense off, come back and make the reception. 23 straight games with at least one catch. Wilson puts his head down and got to the 40, a pickup of two. Somebody on the far side for A&M got real physical on that lead play. Chris Samuels just got rejected out of there. David Klingler, one of your average days at quarterback, 716 yards and seven touchdowns. <laughs> Second down and eight for the Longhorns. High game, 14-14, with just over six minutes to go third quarter. Near the 37-yard line. Still about five yards to go for the first down. Chris Crooms made the tackle. Scott Gooch, number 64, came across on the counter tray and threw a nice block in the backfield and enabled uh, Adrian Walker to get upfield. Remember, Butch had not not playing in this game for Texas, and their ground game has suffered because of it. They came in averaging 192 yards a game on the ground. Third down and six with a blitz coming. Walker made another catch. First down, Texas. What a nice adjustment by Texas, though. First of all, Gardner checks off. He sees the blitz. Walker with the adjustment outside. Runs far enough to get the first down. Turns around, stops, and receives the football. You see the combination, though. The quarterback and the receiver both being on the same page, understanding where they've got to go to get the first. Walker with two catches in this drive. First down, Longhorn. Wilson. Boy, there's a price being paid at the end of every play right now as these two teams in the second half with so much talk all week between here and College Station. Yeah, you know, you had Stan Thomas, number 51. He was saying, I don't know what an Aggie is. And, and then we had on the other side, Anthony Williams, a linebacker, number 48, for the Aggies talking bad about Texas. And, the, and then uh, you come to the game and Anthony Williams is hurt and he's not playing. <laughs> he started it all for A&M and he's not out there. Gardere improvised his way to the 25-yard line. Albert Jones and Will Thomas make the hit. And I think uh, William Thomas will probably get a little call from Albert Jones. They'll tell him to turn around and say, hey, you see the color of my jersey? That time you hit me. <laughs> I'm one of your guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas is very active out there. We talked to the A&M coaches. They said they've tried everything put a little weight on him, but he can't weigh, as we said before, more than about 205 pounds. Started as a safety and is now the outside linebacker, the impact player on that defense. Third and four, Texas. Gardere to Samuels. Now let's see where they gave him the forward progress. I think he's short of the first down. He wanted the 21, and they didn't give it to him. Nor did Jason Atkinson and Chris Kroon. Do you go here or do you kick the field goal, Dan? I think the way that you're, you know, the offense has been working for Texas, you should just line it up and go uh, go again. You, you can get the first down here. you got to feel confident enough in your offensive line. Well, David McWilliams agrees. Here comes Clark, the second tight end. 
biggest play of the game with three minutes to go third quarter. And it all gets down to field position down here, Brad. You know, if you happen not to be successful, you're still in great position for your defense. Fourth and one. saw Chris Samuels fake it up over the top. This time he gets the rock and goes over the top. Good elevation on the play. Watch him just dive up over that offensive line. Defensively, A&M are hitting their own people and not finding the, uh, the third running back to come up over the top. Walker and Cash, the wide receivers on first down. Texas at the A&M 19. Walker. Thirteen yards, and it's first and goal. Brad, I'm seeing some good blocking out there once again. Scott Gooch, number 64, leading out on the play. You got Chuck Johnson over there. 79 was out last week. Watch 64 here. That's Gooch. Now, keep in mind, he's a reservist. Get the chance to play. Look at that lead block, and it's sealing off the man. Now, Walker hits the corner, gets another block from his running back. You got wide receivers blocking now. Field. Everybody putting an effort into the play. Two tight ends. Keith Cash, the lone wide receiver, first and goal at the six. Phil Brown to the four. Remember, the Longhorns have not led in this football game. They spotted AM 14 points, battled back. Pete Gardair, a 50-yard touchdown run, and then threw a pass to Keith Cash to even things at 14. And 82,500 plus waiting to see now if the Longhorns can take the lead. Second and goal. Samuels. Touchdown. Pollock, 37 out of 37 on his extra points this year. Make it 38. Left side of that offensive line for Texas is living large right now, folks. They're getting off the line of scrimmage. Watch them push that defensive line either to the turf or in the end zone, just punishing them. And then Chris Samuels, 23, just goes straight across for the TD. The Longhorns by seven. Late third quarter. You're all fast free. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Wrong number. Mm -hmm. Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats. Surprise. They're good for you. The Longhorns with their third touchdown drive of the day. 54 yards and 12 plays. And they've got a 21-14 lead. Brad Nussler, Dan Jiggins, and Mike Joy in Austin, Texas, where Michael Pollack will kick it off. This one goes out of bounds. Let's take another look at the touchdown. Now watch the backside blocking here, and then watch the center block. That's Turk McDonald, the center, number 55. Backside guard is Jeff Boyd, 58. It's so important on the backside to keep your block and maintain it. You see Boyd blocking on 43. That's Atkinson, and that's what allows Samuels to get into the end zone, mainly because there's nobody up inside to stop him. He's, everybody's getting knocked on their backs. We talked about Texas' total offense in the first quarter being a meager eight yards, and now the tide has turned, and A&M finds itself to that same predicament so far in this stanza. And the Longhorns have scored 21 unanswered points. Another kickoff coming up as Pollock has to do it again. Garrett and Carter are deep. from the 16. Out 
to about the 33-yard line. The Longhorns keep coming back. They've done it all year. Mike Joy, they're doing it again. Brad, that drive looked a lot like a 60-yard drive against Baylor last week, where Texas came down the field against the wind, ran seven and a half minutes off the clock, settled for a field goal, but it gave them a 10-point lead, iced the game against Baylor, and sent them to the Mobile Cotton Bowl. All right, Mike, thank you. The Longhorns, 9-1. The Aggies 8-2-1. And, and Richardson in there despite a sore right leg. Lewis. Lewis. 11 yards to the 45. And he's up over 80 yards rushing. The thing about Darren Lewis, uh, he and Robert Wilson, they both run with a great deal of determination. And Wilson, the guy that always throws the blocks up front, that time he got Brian Jones, number 60, out of there. And watch that little spin move right at the end of the play that netted uh, Darren Lewis about another two yards. Is this where they just stick with Lewis and let him do his I thing? I think so. You just go to your option stuff now. Just hammer it away. Wilson hangs on to this one and got three or four. Don't forget tomorrow, some great NFL action for you. The Eagles and the Bills. That'll be a great clash. And Detroit, Chicago. Don't be surprised if Detroit gives Chicago a big scare. And the Rams at Cleveland, Atlanta at Tampa Bay. New Orleans and Dallas in a late game. Leslie Vester is going to have a feature on Randall Cunningham and how he has really come on here in the last month and a half. And the last word before kickoff, where well, you'll see it on the NFL today, 12.30 Eastern tomorrow on CBS Sports. Patterson in motion. Lewis. In the Longhorn territory to the 48, but it'll still be third down. Close to three coming up. But the way that Texas is trying to penetrate on the line of scrimmage, there are going to be some plays where they're going to get shocked a little bit. But the other part of that is when you penetrate across that line of scrimmage, you will stop that offense many times. And we'll stop the end of the third quarter. With a score, the Texas Longhorns 21, the Aggies of Texas A&M 14. Our coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station. This is CBS. Something to think about if you throw trash on Texas highways. Somebody up there is going to be watching. And you don't want to mess with the Texas Confederate Air Force. So don't mess with Texas. CBS Sports coverage of today's CFA game is sponsored by Hewlett Packard Laser Jet Printers. They'll get you noticed. Xerox, the document company. And by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. We look over the state capitol and into Memorial Stadium. Are we start the fourth quarter? Texas in front by a touchdown. Darren Lewis. That should put him over 100 yards on the day. And I will go back to something I said earlier in the game. We talked to Robert Wilson, the uh, fullback. Watch him here on the lead block about his being unselfish and throwing a lot of blocks for Darren. Darren with that little counter step. But watch Wilson out front. Whenever he gets out there, he tries to put his man down to the astroturf, and he's generally successful. And as a result, Lewis is successful running the football. Unselfish play on the part of Wilson. First down, a and m And around coming. Tony Harrison got pasted. We're just two plays into the fourth quarter at Memorial Stadium with over 82,500. Brad Nussler, Dan Jiggets, and Mike Joy in a rivalry that dates back to the late 1800s. And Texas has come from 14 to nothing down to lead 21 to 14. Darren Lewis, who has over 100 yards on the day, started things off with a 17-yard touchdown run and then added one from 12 yards out to put the Aggies in front. But Pete Gardere and the Texas offense, not to be denied, he went 50 yards on his own, then hooked up with Keith Cash to draw even at 14. That's where we were at halftime. But Texas, on a four-yard touchdown run by Chris Samuels, has taken the lead 
as we are now early in the fourth quarter. We'll check out Harrison when we come back with 14.27 to play. This is Jim Nance from Birmingham, Alabama, where today 76,000 will fill Legion Field for Alabama against Auburn. This great in-state rivalry continues, and Gary Hollingsworth will try to lead the Crimson Tide to a New Year's Day bowl bid. Stan White will try to do the same for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn and Alabama coming up next. Right now, we'll send you back to Brad Nessler. All right, Jim, I'm sure that one will live up to the billing as this one has with Texas in front by a touchdown. Watch the last play. Tony Harrison on the run on the reverse. And watch Shane Jeanette, number 81, right here. Hammers him to the turf, gets up and says, he's out of there. He gave the safe sign. He should have gave the, given the outside. Hey, on that he hit. plays defensive line. He got confused. <laughs> Lewis. Jeter made the stop after a pickup of maybe a yard. Darren Lewis over 100 yards on the ground on 21 carries today, but not much right there. Darren Lewis, the Southwest Conference all-time career rushing leader, and he's had another excellent day today. Division 1AA quarterfinals going on. We'll have the Division 1AA championship on CBS for you coming up in a couple of weeks. Richardson in trouble. Got away. But he won't get the first down. He think for Bucky there, though, is he kept his team within field goal range by avoiding the sack and then getting some extra yardage after he got across the line of scrimmage. Brings up my next question to you. Do you kick the field goal here, attempt the long 47, 48 yarder, or do you try to get the three or four yards for the first down? I think here you probably want to go for the field goal, depending on how Talbot's playing. But watch the rush here uh, of Texas's defense. Cheater, number 99, goes right over the top. He had him trapped in the backfield. And then uh, Bucky goes down and gets pasted later on. It looks like AM is just going to try to get this first down. Fourth down and four for the Aggies. You'll know in a minute whether or not they get the first down, and Richardson's going to take a timeout. With 12.42 to play, and we'll be back in Austin in a moment. R.C. Slocum's decided to go for it on fourth down and four. Trying to draw Texas offside. On the option, it's Lewis. First down, touchdown. successful in the play. Again, Robert Wilson, watch the fullbacks block on this play. Boy, I'm telling you, this is this is going to be his personal highlight reel. Pancake block on Richards, number 18. Richard comes in, and he just gets smothered by Wilson. Oh. And that springs Darren Lewis for his hat trick touchdown. His third of the day. Over 130 yards on the ground. And here's how they fell on the sideline. Look at R.C., he wants to throw a block over there. <laughs> and then they get the cool back right away and say, go for one. <laughs> I don't know how coaches keep their composure on the sidelines. <laughs> Terry Venetulius to kick. And we're even at 21 apiece. With 
his second return of the day. Folks, if you're sitting at home in the living room, get a cool beverage ready because here comes Darren Lewis and Robert Wilson into your living room. Lewis with the nice pitch out there, receives the ball. Wilson with the pancake block, as we talked about before. And Darren Lewis high steps it on in the end zone. A hundred touchdown. 135 yards on 22 carries and three touchdowns for Darren Lewis as he tries to cap a brilliant career at Texas A&M. That's 18 rushing touchdowns for him this season, Brad. 19 overall. That's right. Longhorns from the 42. Number 39. Patrick Wilson, the first man through, got it near the 46. And we work our way near the 12-minute mark. Georgia Tech leading the dogs. Georgia Tech, of course, hoping for an unbeaten regular season, once tied by North Carolina. John Miller has had a great game from the AM nose tackle spot. And let's go to the AM sideline and Mike Joy. Well, the momentum turned just as they predicted Thursday night when the bonfire fell in front of 35,000 people. It's a long-standing tradition at AM since 1909. You see some of the bonfires became official in 36, and now they limit it to 55 feet plus the outhouse on top. But Texas has tried to sabotage the bonfire several times. They lit it off three weeks early in 33. They tried to aerial firebomb it in 48 without success. Planted hidden explosives didn't work. In 58, it kind of collapsed on its own. A&M canceled classes for two days so the students could rebuild it and light it off on schedule. The other night, it went down in a record 15 minutes, they think, signifying an A&M blowout. <laughs> 11.40 to go in the game. We're tied at 21. Virginia's Sean Moore, BYU's Ty Detmer, Notre Dame's Raheem Ismail, Houston's David Klingler, Colorado's Eric Bieniemy. The announcement of the Heisman winner today on CBS Sports. Third down and eight for the Longhorns at their own 44-yard line. Deep pass in motion. Gardner with time. Pass has it. some big catches today. He's the serious one of the Cash Twins, and that was a pretty serious catch across the middle. Yeah, and I'm sure if you talk to Chris Crooms, they had to tackle him number six. He'll tell you that he was serious as well. Watch number 11 on the crossing route. That's uh, that's Keith Cash right there coming in and making a reception. Crooms was following him with strong safety. Back to the ground. And Wilson. You know, I'm thinking if, if, if I'm Texas, Brad, what I want to do is keep the rock and drain the clock. What that simply means is keep the ball on the ground and just let that clock burn up. And they've got about 11 minutes left in the ball game. And you got to believe that they're thinking, hey, look, get down here, get the score, but take your time doing it. They bring Samuels back in. He gave him the go-ahead touchdown. The Aggies answered to even it up at 21. And now as we work our way under 11 minutes, Longhorns second and six. of the day, 16 yards, first down. Len Amity, the offensive coordinator, is really confusing the issue by putting Cash in the backfield in motion and breaking him up the field. And what it's doing to the secondary of A&M is they're making, they're giving him a large cushion to play in zone. So he's coming up underneath of the zone, but the reason why is because he's coming out of the backfield, not from his normal wide receiver position. Remember what we said, Len Amity said, you've got to find us. Nobody found Keith Cash that time. Samuels to the 15. 
It's interesting when you look at the two defense, the uh, offensive coordinator for Texas, Lynn Amity, who was at Texas A&M, and actually arrived there with the defensive coordinator of A&M, Bob Davey. Both of them know each other very well, and they know what one another likes to do. We said to Lynn Amity, what does that mean? Because you know each other. He says it means the fear is in the coaches. The kids will play the game. Both teams worried about whether or not their signals could be stolen from their respective sidelines. All of that going on all week, too. Second and four. Wilson. Larry Horton saved a touchdown. Wilson simply pillaging the inside of that uh, A&M defense. That time he got hit just as he got across the line of scrimmage, but just pulled away from it. Good blocking up front. And watch him pull away from that, that uh, attempted tackle. And finally, Larry Horton, number 39, brings him down. First and goal for the Longhorns at the A&M 6. Dardere. Wilson got popped. Mike Corian. William Thomas, the man that forced the pitch. Quinn Corian from Baytown, Texas. 6'4", 238 pounds, just brings it on the corner. That's his 11th tackle for the ball game. Second down a goal, but it's way back at the 11-yard line. That was a big play by Quinn. and Johnson, the wide receivers there to the bottom of your screen. Gardere on the run. Touchdown! Johnny Walker, number one, was covered pretty well on the play, and as a result, Pete Gardere got the in position to throw. He said, no, can't go there. It's just going to run it in. Now, the other thing that happened is he got an m, &M blitz with the two inside linebackers coming in. Here's the second one of them, number 44, Quentin Coria, chasing him around the corner. They call out an m, &M blitz because he's in the Mike and the Mo linebackers, the inside linebackers. They came inside. Gardere hit the corner. No pressure outside to contain. He hits the end zone. Gardere throw through an interception in the first quarter, remember, and since then, though statistically, it may not be one of his best games. Two touchdowns running and one throwing, and the Longhorns lead by seven. Fifty-eight yards in nine plays. But the Aggies still have eight and a half minutes to do something about it. Pollock will kick it off. Garrett and Carter are deep. Garrett six yards in, won't bring it out. Offense works from its own 20-yard line. As 
we go to Mike Joy. Mike, in 1955, Texas student Henry Pitts was making shadow pictures on the wall, and he came up with this. It looked a bit like Bevo's Longhorn. His good friend Harley Clark was yell leader. He showed the symbol to some 6,000 fans that night. Didn't help beat TCU, but it became a school symbol. Today, Henry Pitts is in row 32, and like many of these 82,000, he's hooking them. All right. Lewis. Worn by Anthony Curl. Brad, let's take another look at that touchdown, though. I'm talking about the double blitz up in here. Both of the inside linebackers came up in the air. Gardere hit the corner, and as I said before, there was no real contain. Normally, your defensive end comes up and contains. He got cut down. Gardere rolls outside, sees the end zone, and just gets in there. Second and 11, Lewis lost a yard. This time, he got about nine of it back before Brian Jones put him down. I tell you what, though, if he gets in that little slipstream of Wilson, he might still be running. Watch Robert Wilson come out. He wants to go outside and go wide on the play. Darren Lewis decides to tuck it up. Shane Garrett trying to close down the corner. Lewis, come outside, baby. That's where the running room is. A good, tough run to put him over 5,000 on a brilliant collegiate career. There's Darren Lewis with some serious heavyweights. Richardson on the keeper. We said to Bucky Richardson, do you actually look for people to run over? He says, no, but I want to get the respect of my offensive lineman. He's talking about the knee uh, injury that he got here two years ago in Texas. He said now, when he's running on the thing, he doesn't think about it anymore. He tested it out early in the season, took a couple of shots. He said, now I feel pretty good. He feels real confident in the leg. He'd feel a lot better if he could get Texas A&M seven more sometime in the next seven minutes. Wilson. To the 49, Anthony Curl, another tackle. Don't forget, Auburn and Alabama, another good old-fashioned rivalry. Coming up right after this one. They call Robert Wilson the bull. I think, you know, the way he runs, you might think he's, you know, he's real close with Bebo down there. You might have... <laughs> I'd, I'd be about as afraid of him as I am of Bebo coming at you. Wilson's the bull, and Lewis is the tank. Those are the nicknames of the two guys in the eye backfield on second and six. Darren Lewis. Nice cutback run. First down, Texas A&M at the Texas 45. What an impressive show by Darren Lewis today. Brad, I've been talking about uh, now if Darren Lewis hits the corner wide. The offensive line is cutting off the inside pursuit for him. If he follows Robert Wilson, watch if he follows him outside wide on this play. Watch Wilson's block out there. And if Darren Lewis will just stay with this counter again when he gets the corner. Now just dip it back outside because Wilson hits the corner there and there's really nobody there to, to stop him. If he's that thing smoking, he hits six points. First down, Aggie. Wilson, the fullback. Right now, time to present this week's Toyota Leadership Award to the team players who've been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. Today's game, team leadership winners. Lance Pavlis, the quarterback from Texas A&M, and Chris Samuels of Texas. Toyota will donate a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Congratulations, gentlemen. Approaching the five-minute mark to go. Texas by a touchdown. Richardson, first down. Boone Powell and Shane Dronat made the tackle. Got the first down by about the length of the football, and he's got 75 yards rushing today, does Bucky Richardson.
took over in the seventh game of the season when Lance Pavlis, our leadership award winner, was struggling a bit. And the offense became the option type of offense that you're seeing today. Richardson got maybe three. Stanley Richard and Anthony Curl are there. So is Bo Robinson, number 45. The fans take a little break to try to catch their breath. You see anybody sitting down in this place? Well, I'm telling you, I think everybody's ready to hyperventilate from screaming so much. <laughs> We're at four minutes to play. Richardson, first down, touchdown. Touchdown, we're a point away from a tie game again. And we have a timeout on the field. Three minutes and 46 seconds to play. Three minutes and 46 seconds to go. Let's go, Rhino. Let's go, Rhino. This is the Bucky Richardson touchdown. Jeter, number 99, had a shot at him, but right now Texas A&M has decided to go for the two points after the touchdown, and they're going to try to run it up with the option. They talked about a possible Darren Lewis option pass back to quarterback Bucky Richardson. That's in their arsenal. At the last minute, I think they straight that idea, and they're going to go straight option and try to get the three. Three yards away from what might be a win. It's 28-27, Texas. Lewis, no. on the pitch and the pitch is forced because of Brian Jones 60 now Lewis does all he can but Barry reads the play excellently he comes up and makes the stop we talked to RC Slocum about this situation he said what would you do and he said well look if we have a chance to win the ball game we're going to go ahead and try to win the football game because at this point we're you know we're going to the bowl and we're trying to establish something here they want to be winners and that's why they went for the two points makes a lot of sense to me Texas on the other hand enjoys the opportunity takes full advantage of it with a big stop by Barry 346 to go in the game. 28 27, Texas with the lead. just went 80 yards in nine plays, then played for the two-point conversion and came up empty. 28-27 Texas, and the Longhorns anticipate an onside kick. Terry Venatulius will kick, and the Longhorns have nine men up close. He squibs it down the middle. Texas with a ball and a one-point lead. As we 
we go to Mike Joy. Mike, there's been a lot of verbal sparring this week, and it's all come out in the paper. Stan Thomas, 51, just going back in the game, said, by this time, I should have my pads off being uh, sitting on the bench eating a hot dog. Well, he's not had to eat his words, but they're not just quite ready to spread the mustard. He's back in the game. All right, we'll give you time to go get a hot dog, Mike. I knew you were going to try to sneak away for one down there. <laughs> From the 30-yard line with 3.42 to go. Number 23. Pick up the four. And a little skirmish at the end of that play. Don't forget, after Texas and Texas A&M, it's Auburn and Alabama. The Tide and the War Eagles. Doing battle. And what should be another great one. So stay right where you are. Second down and six coming up. Bucky Richardson, the man that got AM what would have been the tying touchdown. Kevin Smith for AM just left the game, uh, got dinged up on that play. He's number 26. He's probably the best cornerback. Let's see if Texas tries to take advantage of it with Johnny Walker. Walker. Adrian Walker. Though, is I think they understand how to take a team out when they got them down in that fourth quarter. They really know how to go at it. Now watch the block here. Gooch 64 comes out, throws a key block outside. Adrian Walker, a sensational job of just hitting the corner rolling. That's what I was talking about before when I talked about Darren Lewis. That's what you want to do. You hit that corner rolling, get a block out there, and take off. At the AM 28-yard line. First down. Wilson and a flag down. Face mask, Texas A&M. The Aggies here at Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas, in front of a, the second biggest crowd ever. The Aggies trail by one, but they jumped out in front by 14. Darren Lewis first from 17 and then from 12 yards out. As the Longhorns spotted the Aggies 14, but Gardair went 50 yards on a keeper and then threw a touchdown to Keith Cash. At halftime, it was 14 apiece. And then the Longhorns got the first lead of the game. Chris Samuels capping a drive from four yards out. The Aggies battle right back in it. Darren Lewis from 31 yards out. And then Texas seesaws back in front. Gardair, his second scoring run of the day. His counterpart, Bucky Richardson, answered from 32 yards away, but the two-point conversion came up well short, and that's where we stand at 28-27. There will be those that question R.C. Slocum's decision to go for two. I think that's the sign of a winner. You want to try it. First and 10, Texas. Adrian Walker inside the 10. They'll spot it down inside the nine yard line. Working our way down near the 140 mark remaining. And Texas A&M only has one timeout remaining, Brad, so they've got to try to bottle up Texas, stop them and get them in that field goal situation, but it's awfully difficult the way the Longhorns are hooking them up today. If the Longhorns could keep it, another 86 seconds and score, this one's over. Wilson to the five. And now it's first and goal. Neither team has anything to complain about today. Sensational efforts both sides of the line of scrimmage. Texas at 
Texas A&M's five-yard line, first and goal. Patrick Wilson got it inside the three. Forty seconds to play in the ball game. The Longhorns don't need another score. They don't need another first down. But it's been six long years of losing to the Aggies. It's been six years since they've been able to take a trip to the Mobile Cotton Bowl. They're about to do both. saying so long for Memorial Stadium. Texas 28, Texas A&M 27. Coming up next on CBS Sports, our college football doubleheader continues as Auburn takes on Alabama. That's followed by the presentation of the Heisman Trophy. You've been watching college football on CBS Sports.